Welcome to part 6 of our tutorial series on how to apply custom visual designs in Moss. In this part, I will demonstrate how to create a custom page layout. The page layout controls how the content areas of each page will be displayed. We can create different page layouts for different design configurations. Each page layout can be shared by multiple pages. Here are some instructions for how to create a new page layout. Instead of reading them here, I will demonstrate the steps using our demo project. In our Moss website, I'm going to go to Site Actions, Modify All Site Settings, and in the Galleries section, I'm going to go to Master Pages and Page Layouts. This is the same Master Page Gallery that we saw in SharePoint Designer. As a matter of fact, here is our demo master page that we created in SharePoint Designer. To create the new page layout, I'll select New, Page Layout, and here we have all the settings to create our new page layout. We don't have any custom content types set up for this project, so I'm going to stick with the Article Page Content Type. This will give us some useful built-in field controls. Here I'm going to give our page layout a name. I'm going to use our project code that we've been using throughout the project, demo underscore. And this is going to be a two column page layout. So I'm just going to name it that two call layout. And that'll help us pick it out easily in SharePoint Designer. The title of the page layout will show up in a lot of the lists when we're using Moss. So I'm going to differentiate it by again using DEMO, and I'm going to call this the two column layout. And here I can even give it a description which just says anything like two column layout for the demo project. We don't need to use variation labels, so I'm just going to click OK, and our new custom page layout will be created. Now our new page layout is ready to be viewed in SharePoint Designer. I'm going to refresh our file list. And here we see our new two column layout right here in the master page gallery along with our custom master page. Now that we have a fresh and empty page layout to work with, we can start incorporating the HTML from our local template. Here are step-by-step -step instructions for your reference. Basically, we will open our page layout in SharePoint Designer and copy over the relevant HTML code. Going back to our HTML template, we know that our custom master page includes the header, top navigation, and footer of this design. Our goal is to have our page layout contain the content area of the page, which includes these two columns. We also want these content areas to be editable by the user. First, let's open our new page layout in SharePoint Designer. You can see it is very similar to a .NET page. It includes some of the relevant content placeholders from our master page. For the content area of the page, we'll be working inside of this content placeholder called placeholder main. In our local template, I had marked the content area with these simple HTML comments. You can see we have a containing div and a div for the left column and a div for the right column. I'm just going to grab all of this code. It's not much because it's a very simple design. And I'm going to paste it right here into our page layout. And I'm going to save our changes. Now we have our structural HTML in place we can start adding some field controls and web part zones to our page layout. These will allow a user to edit content in the web page via the browser. You can use one or the other, or a combination of both, depending on the requirements of your Moss website. Let's talk about field controls first. The great thing about field controls is that you can control exactly which types of content the user will edit directly in the page. When we associated the article page content type to our page layout, 
it made certain field controls available for us to use in this page layout. You can create custom content types in Moss, which would allow for your own set of field controls. But in this example, we'll stick with the article page content type. When I open the toolbox in SharePoint Designer, we can see our field controls listed under SharePoint Controls. Here it indicates that these page fields and content fields are from the article page content type. If I mouse over one of these fields, a little pop-up message will describe what type of content field this is. I'm going to remove the placeholder text from the right column. Then I can simply drag in the content fields that I want. I'd like to use the title field, which is a plain text field, and I'm going to enclose that in a header tag. On the next line, I'm going to drag in the page content field. And this field will allow the editor, the user, to edit content with a WYSIWYG editor, HTML editor. With field controls, you are locking down the type of content that the user may edit in that area of the page. But we can also add web part zones to the page. These zones allow the user to drop in whatever web parts they want via the browser. This is also useful if we've developed custom web parts as part of the project and we need a zone where we can drop them into the page. I would like to add a web part zone to the left side column of our page layout. I'm just going to remove this bit of placeholder text. And then if I go to insert SharePoint controls, the web part zone option will be grayed out if I haven't saved the changes to my page. So I'm going to go ahead and save those changes, make sure my cursor is in place, and then I'm going to try to insert the web part zone again. Here you can see that it added the code for the web part zone. It also added this proxy web part manager code up here and it kind of moved my code around a bit. So I'm just going to do a carriage return to get my code back in place. And then let's take a look at this web part zone tag that it added here. It generated this huge ID, but we can change that. I'm going to call this the left zone. And I'm going to change the title as well, because the title will actually show on the web page when the user has it in editing mode. So I'll call this left zone with a space. After adding the field controls and web part zones, I'm going to save my changes. And then I'm going to publish our new page layout by checking it in and publishing a major version. So now we have a custom master page and a custom page layout for our demo Moss website. In the next part of this tutorial series, I'll demonstrate how to assign the custom master page and custom CSS file in Moss.